Did you know most RVs have two completely different electrical systems? Have you ever wanted to troubleshoot problems or plan an upgrade but didn't know where to start? Welcome everyone, today we're going to help you understand all the basics about your RV electrical system. Here we go! Most of what you need to know about an RV electrical system comes down to measuring various aspects of electricity. To do this, we have to talk about a few things. The first measure is voltage, and is measured in, you guessed it, volts. It's written as an uppercase V. It can be useful to think of electricity like water flowing down a river. Voltage can be thought of as the amount of water flowing. A small stream has a small volume of water flowing, like a low voltage system. Meanwhile, a huge deep river has much more water capacity and is like a high voltage system. Different electrical systems have different voltages. For instance, your cell phone charges at 5 volts. Your RV battery system runs at 12 volts. Home electrical systems run at 120 volts in North America and 230 volts in Europe. Meanwhile, high tension power lines can run at over 300,000 volts. Note that higher voltage systems are more dangerous to humans and animals. A shock from a 12 volt system will hurt, but a sustained shock from a 120 volt system has the potential to kill you. The second measure is current. Current measures the flow speed of electricity and is measured in amperes, or just amps for short, written as an uppercase A. You can think about it again like water flowing. Water flows down a gentle hill slowly. This is similar to a low amperage flow, like powering a small light. The same amount of water flowing over a mountain cliff moves much faster, like the electricity needed to power an electric motor. Current is really important because faster flowing electricity generates heat, sometimes a lot of heat. More current requires thicker wires, and if your wires aren't thick enough or don't have good connections, they can get hot enough to melt or even catch fire. That brings us to the third and most important measure, which is literally just power. Power is determined by multiplying voltage times current and is expressed as watts. This is written as an uppercase W. If you think about the water analogy, this is like multiplying the flow speed by the volume of water. You can imagine how a wide, slow flowing river has more energy than a small, fast flowing stream. Similarly, a high voltage system with low current can have more power than a low voltage system with high current. Electric appliances measure power usage in watts. For instance, an old style incandescent light bulb might have been rated at 100 watts. Meanwhile, new LED light bulbs with the same brightness only use about 10 watts. An RV air conditioner rated at 10,000 BTU will use about 700 watts, whereas a small fan might only use 20 to 30 watts. These power ratings become important when we look at battery systems a bit later on. RVs have two separate power systems, the DC or direct current system and the AC or alternating current system. The DC system runs at 12 volts and is commonly referred to as the 12 volt system. The system is always on and running in your RV as long as your battery is connected and charged. Some 12 volt appliances that run on this system include lights, electric tongue jacks, fans, and RV propane furnaces. RV fridges also require 12 volt power when running on propane. The AC or alternating current system runs at 120 volts and is commonly referred to as shore power. This comes from the boating world when a boat is docked and plugged in. The AC or 120 volt system is only available if you're either plugged into grid power, running a generator, or running an inverter. We'll discuss these more in the next section. Some 120 volt appliances include air conditioners, microwaves, and most televisions. Most RV fridges can also switch over to run on 120 volt power. Plugging in at a campsite powers your RV's AC or shore power system and lets you run 120 volt appliances. Different sites offer different levels of service, including 15 amp, 30 amp, and 50 amp service. 15 amp service is like one normal household plug. It won't run most RV air conditioners, and you can only use one major appliance at the same time. 
For instance, if you try and run the microwave and electric kettle simultaneously, you might trip a circuit breaker. 30 amp service can usually run your air conditioning and several other appliances at the same time. 50 amp service is for larger rigs and can often run two air conditioners plus many appliances all together. If you are not close to an electrical grid, you can use a gas or propane generator to produce AC power in remote locations. They are rated by the maximum wattage they can produce. How large of a generator do you need? You can determine this by adding up the wattage ratings of all appliances that you need to use at the same time. Note also that some appliances, like air conditioners and microwaves, have a peak or starting wattage that is higher than their running wattage, so pay close attention to those numbers as well. And remember from earlier that to determine wattage, you simply multiply voltage by amperage. So to have the equivalent of 120 volt 30 amp shore power, you'll need a generator rated at 3600 watts or higher. An 1800 watt generator, meanwhile, will provide similar service to a 15 amp shore power connection. The 120 volt system, when active, is used to power and recharge your 12 volt system. RVs have something called a converter that, true to its name, converts 120 volt electricity to 12 volt. These are coupled with a charge controller that controls how much power to send to your battery to recharge it and keep it topped up. What happens if you're boondocking or at a campsite without electric hookups? And let's say you don't want to run a noisy, smelly generator. Enter clean, quiet solar power. Solar systems generate DC power and can directly power your 12 volt system so you can run all your 12 volt appliances and charge your batteries. But what if you want to be able to use 120 volt appliances? In that case, you need an inverter. This does the opposite of your RV's converter and transforms DC power to AC power, stepping up 12 volts to 120 volts. This would be helpful to run something like a microwave or a slow cooker, for instance. To run high wattage appliances like this, you need to make sure that your inverter has a high enough rating. You also need to make sure that your wires are thick enough to handle the current. If your wires are too thin, they could get too hot, melt, or even catch fire. Finally, you need to ensure that your battery bank has sufficient discharge capacity. Some types of batteries can be damaged if they are discharged too quickly. Of course, solar power can only be generated when it's sunny. So if you want any electricity when it's cloudy or at night, you need to store that energy somewhere. Before we talk about batteries, we need to introduce two new units of measure. First, the watt hour, represented as capital W lowercase h. This is simply the amount of power required to run a one watt device for one hour. Second, we have the amp hour, a related measurement often used to measure the capacity of automotive, RV, and marine batteries. Watt hours are a more useful measurement since they translate well across different electrical systems. When calculating battery system requirements, I recommend making all calculations in watt hours. You can convert amp hours to watt hours by multiplying by the voltage of the battery. So a 12 volt battery rated at 100 amp hours gives you 1200 watt hours of capacity. There are more considerations when you get into the type of battery, but that will have to wait for a future video. Calculating battery capacity is a bit more complicated than figuring out generator sizes. You need to know one, how much power your appliances use, and two, how many hours per day you expect to use them. You then make a list and add them all up. A simple example would be one, RV lights, 50 watts for one to two hours is 50 to 100 watt hours. Two, an RV furnace fan uses 150 watts for two to three hours, giving 300 to 450 watt hours. Three, RV vent fans, 100 watts for one hour, 100 watt hours. Four, carbon monoxide detector, fridge, and other small devices that run all day. 10 watts for 24 hours gives you 240 watt hours. And a laptop computer, 50 watts for four to six hours gives you 200 to 300 watt hours. Adding these all up gives a total of about 900 to 1200 watt hours, which dividing by 12 means you'd need 75 to 100 amp hours of usable 12 volt battery capacity for one full day of energy storage. 
and keep in mind that different types of batteries have different percentages of usable capacity. Lead acid batteries, for instance, provide only about 50% of their rated capacity before their voltage drops and you can start damaging them. People often ask about running air conditioners off solar and batteries. This is possible, but it requires a lot of solar and a lot of batteries. Even a small RV air conditioner uses 700 to 1000 watts, meaning you'd need upwards of 3000 watt hours stored just to run it for a few hours each day. I hope this video helped expand your understanding of RV electrical systems. If you still have questions, please be sure to leave them in the comments. I'll answer them there or even create some follow-up videos to go more in-depth on some of these topics. If you enjoyed this video, we'd really appreciate if you could give us a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and share this video on Facebook, Twitter, and with your friends. It really helps us grow our community and reach a wider audience. And in the meantime, Keep on living the life you've imagined.